Good morning. Good morning. The Vikings are up seven to nothing. Last I heard, they still have the ball. That's the last update you'll get from me. All right. I did try to get it on this. I did actually. Uh, I was going to say you can turn off your cell phones now and take out all your little earplugs. Uh, it's the first time that's happened that they're playing the same time as church. Uh, a delight to be with you today. Let me tell you. Um, just a couple things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the last communion hymn, it's 575 printed in the worship folder. It's actually going to be 576. The words are the same. You just repeat the ending twice. So uh, I uh, put a five instead of a six. So we're good there. Uh, a reminder, uh, St. John's Mountville is having their uh, pork chop dinner today. It goes until 1230, I think. So uh, please uh, show them our support. Uh, and as I say that, as we begin our partnership with them, just a reminder, that starts November 6th, which means our service will move to 930 on November 6th. All right. I've had a few people text me, what time's church? Like, it's, it's, we're good. We're good. It starts November 6th, 930, and I'll keep saying that every week until you know what we're doing or what I'm doing, maybe. Uh, we gather at the Lord's table today uh, to receive the blessings uh, of his body and blood. At his altar, our order of service is divine service setting one, and our first hymn, 496, Holy Spirit, Light Divine, 496. Blessings to all of you this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unworthy. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son,
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing responsibly the intro. I hope for your salvation, O Lord. I rejoice at your word. Seven times a day I praise you. Grant peace have those who love your law. My soul keeps your testimonies. from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness. By your grace, hear the prayers of your church. Grant that those things which we ask in faith we may receive through your bountiful mercy. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Habakkuk, the first chapter. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. I will take my stand at the watch post and station myself on the tower, and look out to see what he will say to me, and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
us stand for the Alleluia, the verse, and the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. Your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith, like a grain of mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he comes in from the field, come at once and recline at the table? Will he not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and dress properly and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in our next hymn, 587. I know my faith is founded 587.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we heard, we sang actually in the intro, it seven times a day I praise you. Seven times a day. I wonder if words like that were the, the reason the that ancient monastic practice of praying every three hours throughout the day and night came about, right? In the monasteries, they pray at midnight, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and 9 p.m. Seven times a day. Seven times a day, they stop whatever they're doing. They wake up from their sleep. They all gather together to pray. Now, I imagine most of us can't even comprehend that, right? Getting up a couple times in the middle of the night just to go pray. I imagine we even have problems doing our Bible readings and praying once a day, right? Because our, our lives are so hectic. Our schedules, they're, they're full of this and that and the demands of our time. They just keep increasing. But you see, that's why those monks and monasteries, they separated themselves from the demands of everyday life. So they could do this seven times a day. We heard another seven today in our readings. Something that's even harder than this one. This seven, which is not just a description of life, it is a prescription. Something that we're told to do. Something that we're expected to do. Right? Did you hear that in the gospel reading? Jesus says, if your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive. Tough words? Sure. If your brother sins, rebuke him. Okay, maybe that's not so tough, right? We like that part, don't we? I mean, sometimes, right? We like pointing out when other people have sinned. But why? Do we do it so that we can forgive them? Or do we do it you know, to make them feel bad, to, to shame them, or to put them in their place. Look what you did. And then when they repent, are, are we quick to forgive them? Right? We quick to let it go? To not speak of it anymore? Or are we silent? Brooding. Making them earn the forgiveness or making them feel bad, you know, for, for just a little while. But sometimes we're the opposite of that too. We don't rebuke our brother or sister. We don't point out their sin because we don't want to deal with it. Right? It's easier not to open that can of worms. So, so we just let them be. We just let them live in their sin, continue in that willful disobedience or in their ignorance. Which is really to say, I, I don't care about you enough to help you. And so we even get hotter in our bitterness, or we get colder in indifference. But you know, that's not even the hard part of what Jesus says here. Jesus says, if your brother sins, rebuke him, right? And if he repents, forgive him. I'm constantly reminded how hard it is to repent. How hard it is not only to say the words, I'm sorry, or I have sinned, but, but to mean them. We'd, we'd much rather deny them, make excuses, justify ourselves, right? Well, they deserved it. They did it first. Everyone else is doing it. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, all that might be true, but it's beside the point. If you did, if you sinned, repent. And then how hard to forgive. How hard to let it go. Right? 
how hard it is not to put that in our mental filing cabinet so that we can pull it out somewhere in the future to, to make sure that person first atone for their sin and, and earn our forgiveness. If he repents, forgive him. Just like that. No ifs, ands, or buts. Just do it, Jesus says. And then even more, he says, if he sins against you seven times in a day and turns to you seven times, I repent, you must forgive. All right, which isn't to say the eighth time you're off the hook. You're not. The eighth time is not when you get to reload and tell him again. No, forgiveness means not counting. Right? Other place in scripture, Jesus says, forgive 77 times or 70 times seven. Just forgive. All right, which also doesn't mean that if someone is abusing you and that you have to let them keep abusing you. Right? You can see to your personal safety and forgive. It doesn't mean that if someone is stealing from you that you have to let them continue to steal it or not report it. You can still protect yourself and forgive if you want the best for that person, to help that person. It's no wonder the response of the disciples after Jesus tells them this. Right? It's not, hey, how do we do that? What are we going to do? I don't do that, do you? Their response, increase our faith. Increase our faith. For how hard this all is, is an indication of just how little our faith really is. Jesus says, smaller than a tiny mustard seed, right? You know what those look like. You can fit one between your two fingers and probably smush it. But he says if you had faith like that little seed, faith like that middle, little mustard seed, you could say to that mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted into the sea, and it would obey you. Don't see too many mulberry trees flying around these days, do you? Increase our faith. Help us to do this. Help us to trust you if we repent, if we forgive, that we're not going to get abused, that we're not going to get walked on, that we're not going to get taken advantage of. Or when we do, we're going to have everything we need. In fact, you know what kind of life you'll get when we act like this. Jesus got it. It's a crucified life, right? Look at Jesus, right? He rebuked the religious leaders for their sins, and he forgave sinners. Right? He just forgave them freely, openly, fully, all the time. Even those who sinned more than could be counted had to be dealt with. Right? Wait, wait, Jesus, you're doing it all wrong. You should be rebuking the sinners and praising the religious, right? The good guys. That's the point. There are no good guys. He says, so you also, when you have done all that you have commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. You see, we, we don't deserve a prize for being good. You haven't earned anything by forgiving. It's just what we're supposed to do. And so now you've gathered here after your week of plowing or keeping sheep or working in your jobs, living in your callings. How have you done? Have you done all that you were commanded to do? Are you worthy servants of the Most High God? Don't need to answer that. But Jesus did. He heard your confession and said, I forgive you. You don't have to earn my forgiveness. I'm not going to make you twist. It's yours, full and free. And, and even more than that, he says today, come, recline at my table. Come and eat and drink while I serve you. 
And then you realize this place, this place is so utterly different than the world. Here is a master that is utterly different than any other. Here, the gifts, not deserved, but freely given. Not so we can continue in our sinful ways, but, but to increase our faith. To give us what we don't have, to provide us what we need, to transform us. That forgiven, we may forgive. That being served, we may serve. And then in so doing, praise the one who gives us all these great things. That's really what it means to praise God. Waking up every three hours throughout the day and night is not really what God had in mind when the psalmist said, seven times a day I praise you. And, and talking about forgiveness, Jesus didn't pull that number out of the air. And it's not a number out of the blue. He's making a connection here. That by forgiving, you are praising. It's serving your neighbor. You're praising God. By wanting the best for them, you're praising all those ways to be Christ to your neighbor. And you're showing him something far greater than a mulberry tree flying through the sky. You're showing him or her that your life for you was one on the tree of the cross. A life so utterly different. A life worth living and a death worth dying. That life and that death starts here. Receiving from Jesus his life and his forgiveness. And then, and then taking that out into the world. Giving that life to others. Family, friends, even our enemies. It might mean crying out like Habakkuk in the Old Testament reading, How long, O Lord? Why? Why is there so much evil in the world? Why is there so much evil in me? Or it might mean suffering with Paul. But even these the Lord is using for our good. That we rely on him and not ourselves. That, that we look to him for everything we need. That, that we rejoice that in a world that often seems hopeless, we're never without hope. We are imperfect and unworthy servants living in an imperfect and unworthy world, but we have a perfect and worthy Savior. And learning this too, that in Him we are more than servants, much, much more. We're His children. We are his children and he is our father. All right, you might not have awoke at 3 a.m. to pray today. You might have awoke a little early to catch the beginning of the Vikings game. I don't know. But if you didn't get up to pray at 3 a.m., that's okay. You don't have to repent of that. That wasn't a sin. But if you did wake up this morning and remembered that grudge you've been nursing or maybe started a new one, if you did something this week or failed to do something this week and refused to repent, or if you failed in any way, so many other ways, come here to receive the body and blood of your Lord and Savior. Come now and be served by your Savior. Bring your sinful, dying flesh and blood to him and receive his life-giving body and blood for you. That's why his body and blood was born. That's why it hung there on the cross. And that's why it's here now for you. To give you his mercy this day and always. Amen. And now may the peace of God, that peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we continue with the prayer of the church.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, receive our thanks that you preserve your word in this world of uncertainty, confusion, and lies. Grant us to love your law and rejoice in your promises continually that we may live in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Timothy learned of Christ from his faithful grandmother Lois and his faithful mother Eunice. Bless all faithful parents and grandparents that they might bear witness to Christ and to their children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, preserve us from paralyzed law and perverted justice. Strengthen those whom you have placed in authority to govern wisely, that we might live free of strife and contention. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, remember those who suffer from violence, strife, illness, or affliction. Be especially with Verona, Matthew, Dave, Reuben, B, Marin, Greg, Jim, Steve, Cassidy, Ray, Marlene, Harlan, Donna, Micah, and Jean. Heal and deliver them according to your will. And when your answers seem slow, strengthen them by Christ's righteousness to await your timing and live by faith. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, though we are unworthy servants, you clothe us in your Son's righteousness and prepare a supper for us. Let us come with repentant hearts to receive Christ's body and blood, ever grateful that he became the suffering servant who went to the cross for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, our receive our thanks for the callings you have given us. Grant that we might rejoice to labor in service to you until you gather us to your banquet table in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated as we gather our offerings today. <laughs> Continue with the preface on page 160 and up on the screens as we prepare to come to the Lord's table this day. Let us stand.
salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying are you Lord of heaven and earth for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior with repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus we beg you O Lord to forgive renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
stand together as we continue with the post communion canticle. Thank the Lord and sing his words. God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May be seated for our closing hymn, 873. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, 873. 